Welcome back, guys, to the channel. And today we will be discussing part two of the Housewives of Potomac reunion. And I must say, this part of the reunion seemed a bit more intense than the first part. It was, it was more intense. Yeah. I'm giving it a nine. I'll say a nine. A nine? You don't think? Um, I mean, there were some, there were some parts that I did like. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff that some people said, some of the uh, cast said, um, it was giving way more than uh, the part one of the uh, the reunion. So I'll give it a nine. I'm comfortable with giving it a nine. Mm, for me, I'm give it a eight and a half. Eight and a half. Because Robin pissed me the fuck off. So I'm not sure if she deserves the point five. <laughs> Um, we started the episode where we were still continuing with Mia, where she was this, um, we saw an ending of the last part where basically Wendy stated that Ike or Ink came over mm -hmm. to the house and bang on the door and wake mm -hmm. the neighbors up and says that he wants his son. And that was where we left off. And then we saw where it continued, where Mia is basically saying that she did an IUI and she knows mm -hmm. that the child is Gordon, so she doesn't know why Ink feels like that it's his child. And then we got Karen being the voice of reason who says that children are off limits, and of course, Which I agree. the child will see this, so not make this a yeah. storyline. And yeah, yes, rightfully, I agree, but I want to know okay, next season. Obviously, this is going to be something that's talked about. So, are we going to be the same off limits and not bring it up, or are we going to basically? I mean, at this point, I feel like she got the right <clears throat> to not wanting wanting to like give this. Why? Because she is the only housewife who have like authentically given like an actual real story of her life and what's going on. Right. She have the right because <clears throat> they were there. Uh, me watching it. And all of them, everyone asking questions. It was almost all the cast member was just asking her questions, including uh, Andy. And I was mm -hmm. like, damn, they're all probing her. Why did they not have the same energy when it comes on to Robin? Why did not Robin, Robin needs to take a, a, a page out of the, uh, uh, Mia's, of Mia's book? book. Because yep. she was there. She was being transparent. She was, she was like willingly <laughs> responding into questions. If it was Robin, she'd be like, I don't care. I don't want to this and all and this. So it was like withholding information. So I, I feel like she got it right at yeah, this point. But I'm just saying like Mia's story is just a messy ass shit. It is messy. messy. It is story. messy. We also saw where she decided to ask Karen that where where she heard the rumor that she was dating a rapper. Karen decided to say that it was at her granddom family reunion party. That mm -hmm. that's when she heard this rumor. Mia then also stated that Ink had nothing to do with her separation from Gordon, which basically seems very different from what showed on the finale where they were right. arguing saying that she was literally cheating for majority of the relationship or the marriage. So I don't see how he had nothing to do with the separation, but is it right. that a situation that he didn't cause a separation, but if there was not no drama with you and Gordon, you'd have pretty much And she did not deny when um, Gordon accused her, accused Inc. of um, basically replacing him. She didn't deny that. Nope. So. Not at all. <laughs> <sighs> Then we moved on to Giselle. Oh, well, she did state as well. Mia stated that everyone reached out to her except um, Wendy and Candice. And Wendy then we and got Candace. this response from Wendy and Candice to me, which didn't really make sense to me. But uh, okay, didn't that's your sense. truth. I'm, then stick yeah. to your truth. But, I'm not here for it. Yeah. At least, especially for Candice. Because, I mean, she she and Mia didn't really have I haven't much. Have yeah, beef. Yeah. yeah. Then we moved on to Giselle's um, lackluster storyline this season. Um, oh. Her only storyline this season was the fact that her daughter was going off to college and she was very emotional over it. And of course, at the mm -hmm. last part of the season, we tragically, she experienced her father's passing away, which we sympathize mm -hmm. and I feel for her. But really and truly, Giselle did not have a storyline this season because I think she felt the blunt of 
meddling in person's relationship and marriage. Right. So she wonder, felt like she wanted to prove a point. That's what I got from it. She wanted to prove a point mm-hmm. this season with not trying to meddle in person's relationship because they always say that she's trying to break up families and whatever. But that was pretty much what Giselle gave us. She just gave us her ass to kiss. She had nothing to give other than her daughter's I, I leaving. wonder if it's because of the uh, lock list, uh, lost her, um, excuse me, um, storyline that's why she's making it making it up for in the reunion now because she's been a that's, real she's very talkative bitch. that very she talkative. normally is and i don't know if it's because yeah. she did nothing this season so she wants to prove her point that she still needed mm-hmm. or if it's mm-hmm. that because she's now second seat so now all of a sudden now you want to have a voice because for the last seven seasons when you were sitting right next to andy you were on mute mm-hmm. You started the mute challenge before Beyonce even knew what the mute challenge was. So it's funny that this season or this reunion, you are more talkative than you normally ever are. Even throughout the entire season, you were literally on mute. So I don't know Mm -hmm. who put a battery in her back. But um, Giselle came ready. I'm sure her and Robin probably discussed that uh, that Robin might not be coming back. So it's like, might as well go out with a bang. Yeah, because they are being, and you just can see it up there. The two of them sitting over there is just I don't a know. mess, Mm-mm, a mess, a real mess. <laughs> she decided to have a breakdown regarding her dad, and during the breakdown, we saw where Candice as well started to become emotional. And you would have thought this would be the redeeming moment for Giselle to acknowledge Candice's emotion, the fact that she's now showing emotion towards her, because you only know that Giselle only cares about emotion once it's reflecting on her. And when it's mm-hmm. about her, that's the only time she cares about emotion. But you would have thought she would have used this opportunity to appreciate the emotion that Candice is sharing. But no, typical Giselle, she has to kick someone else further down. So she says that, of course, she's crying even when it's not about her. And I'm like, <laughs> this is why the group can't move forward. And I hope your stands <laughs> see that she is also a part of the problem why this group cannot move forward. Because... Yeah. Just um, Candice, and this is the funny thing about him. When it was in the episode where she was speaking about her daughter going to college and they were complaining about how Wendy and Candice were making faces and that she was mm-hmm. talking about her daughter and how dare them, it was mm-hmm. a problem. We're at the reunion and you're speaking about your dad passing and this girl is showing emotion and that's still a problem. I hope the fans on Twitter and persons see this, that it doesn't matter what they do. It's always Mm -hmm. going to be a problem for her. But this is where they really pissed me off. This is where I really got pissed off. And it was by Giselle. It was at Giselle. It was when uh, they were ridiculing um, Wendy and Candice about the same scene when she was talking about uh, uh, Grace going to college and um, the faces that they were making. And yes, fine. That they were making they the faces. Up, that but the fact that she something. brought up, yeah, that she told her congrats, and she was like, "That did not happen. That did not happen." But the thing, like, why that's the, the hell producers thing. did not roll the tape because I remember because they're protecting there. Giselle. They're protecting Giselle. They're not going to roll the tape. And then no, you have dumb ass producers in, and oh, we don't have the footage. I'm sure you don't have the footage, right? And like Messi, Messi, and they don't remember that. Like that's something that I. At would this point, remember. they need to find a new host for this reunion because Andy uh, makes no complete no sense. There's no way you can be coming on to this reunion saying that you're trying to create or have resolution for the reunion, yeah. and you Everything clearly needs... did not watch the season, and you clearly are not being unbiased in your approach when you're yeah. asking these questions. There's no way that you can be seeking a resolution for the ending of this reunion when. You are everything is not on the table. Side. Yeah, you are picking sides. You are expecting Wendy and Candice to be to take accountability and apologize, mm-hmm. while you have Giselle over there who decides to pick and choose and refuse if she wants to apologize, and no one is holding her accountable. You are not probing. You are not pushing. And even if you were, I'm not seeing it because they love to hey, say after everything it. went down that oh. It was there, but it got cut out because I need to concise everything. And they, yeah, we're not seeing they it. They took so many breaks. I was like, at some point, producers could have went and pulled that up. I would have. Me as exactly. Wendy, I would have went and find and find the episode and pull it up because I know I did. And then she was. And saying, I saw oh, it as well. I sad. saw it. it and I remember sad. when Candice said, "Congratulations," and the bitch continued speaking about 
whatever she was talking about and she did not want to acknowledge Candace. But now mm-hmm. you're more concerned about her making faces when you're talking about your child. Fuck you. Right. And then I would have made faces as and well. Karen and I would have made faces on, that make her know. Karen went on to make a very valid point when she was saying before she was cut off by uh Giselle when she was saying that it doesn't matter because in so many times in so many they instances, make faces. They make faces. Other people make faces when someone is having a conversation and then she was going on to cut it off. But this, this is about how the light-skinned bandits love to... She is really weaponizing to... her, her, her children. This is how the crazy. light-skinned bandits love to flip it. Because mm-hmm. now they're going to say, yes, they were making faces, but it had nothing to do with anybody's children or anything like that. But because you were talking about Giselle, it's not a typical Karen behavior. Mm-hmm. Because you were speaking about Giselle and Giselle was speaking about her kids, that's when it's off limits and that's no go. But it's okay for grown ass adults to be making faces for when someone is talking. But mm-hmm. when it's a, when you are getting that same treatment, you are expecting sympathy and empathy for whatever you were saying. I can recall, about. I can vividly recall in the episode when they went to uh the islands. But it was was it Bahamas? It was Bahamas, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. When they just well, landed Dominican there, they were Republic, in the sorry, Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And they were in the lobby area and Wendy was doing a toast and she was being really cheerful. She's a toast to no drama and this and that. Uh Robin and uh Giselle, they were there making faces. It exactly. was the same it was a same Karen sense. behavior. Karen behavior. You want to dish it, but you cannot take it. Simple. That's crazy. We that was pretty much for Giselle's package. I don't recall anything more for Giselle because Giselle really has nothing going for herself. <laughs> we then moved on to Candice's package, where you know they were speaking about her music career and everything, and of course the lawsuit that got dismissed with her and Michael. We mm-hmm. then got where Ashley says that she really knew nothing about the lawsuits for some again reason. A it's a lie, allegedly. But then we have dumbass Candace saying that, oh, my mom, my mom actually thought that right. you had something to do with it. But I told her, no, no, no. Ashley is such a saint. She has nothing to do with it. Right. I'm like, when are you going to stop portraying pick me energy? Right. Why would These she These girls not will know. shit in your face, kick right. you while you're down, and you still come back to <laughs> defend and act as if like there's so much more to them than what we are seeing Mm -hmm. how many times are you going to make these persons play in your face i i don't understand at this point this is the same man that she's been rubbing rubbing his rubbing his feet at night for her allowance anything that's crazy okay robin then decides to say she thought candace was being critical of her job when we spoke about her fraudulent life um (laughs) This was where I okay. saw the double standards of the producers and the whole thing. Because mm-hmm. for the entire season, they made it seem as if when Candice asked Robin, are you mad at me? They made it seem as if it, she said that when she went on interviews and called her a fraud, etc. And then she's then messaging mm-hmm. Robin asking, are you mad at me? <clears throat> where we then found out in the reunion that there, there was more context to the message. And I believe Candice was alluding to this during the season on Twitter, saying that there was more to the timeline. <clears throat> Where mm-hmm. she literally said to her, literally after the last reunion, before anything came out about her being a fraud, she said to her that um, something about her long, dry hair. And then she decided yeah. to respond and say that, oh, I guess this is typical, like white, whatever, white looking white, or whatever case might be. And then that's, yes. <laughs> and then it's where Candice responded and said, are you mad at me? And then that is when we got the whole yeah. ignoring of messages and stuff and then candace did her interview and turn again around. i'm not saying Before that, that she also turned around and uh reached out when one story came out exactly she did reach out and, and then she, she still ignored not. her yeah so i am not saying there's a right or a wrong or wrong or whatever i'm just saying that there is more to the but timeline and if out. this was shown during the season it would have made more sense to the audience right because you villainized Ca- um candace for the entire season to make it seem as if like she went on twitter and blasted her and cursed her out and went on interviews and cursed out robin as she rightfully yeah. should be and then messaging her discreetly asking her are you mad at me like why are we why is it not that's the problem with this show. You see, if you production, if you take mm-hmm. a step back and stop trying to protect people and giving people a good edit, yeah. it would make the show so much more easier to watch, so much more enjoyable, and so much more understandable to Authentic. watch. Authentic. 
Right. Because it's hard to watch a too. show when you are cutting pieces together to form a story. And if you're doing it that way, then why wait until the reunion to show the full message? Like, what's the point of sending this? What's the whole point? Yeah, you're what's the point of having this on the, said... beef, the, the, the beef that's not real? Exactly. What's the point of having this scenario or this thing play out for the entire season of this way? But then on the reunion, you're going to show it the actual way. What was the point of that? It was just ridiculous. Like... I don't know. That is why I said I couldn't give this episode a nine. Because it was just those little stupid moments where I'm like, yeah, no, I gotta what take was all back. of this for? <laughs> what was all of this for? Like, we, I didn't get it. We also got where Robin decided to put her in her best actress moments. I didn't know she wanted to be an actress. But she decided yeah. to put on her big moment to, and have a little cry that there was no tears saying that she felt uncomfortable regarding when it comes on to the conversation of colorism and mm -hmm. uh, why are, why are you uncomfortable speaking about colorism robin i don't get it mm -hmm. i don't get why she's uncomfortable and then we got the back and forth with uh, well wendy decided to chime in and voice mm -hmm. of reason and then we had Karen trying to save face. And I liked how Wendy shot her down and let her know, look. Yeah. This, we don't, you guys don't have the range to speak about colorism in this group. Simple as that. They don't. I agree. They don't. They don't. And the fact that we have the rest of them just sitting there all silent just speaks yeah. volumes to me. Not calling them a colorist, but they do display somewhat colorist behavior i can see and I mean... it's just so ridiculous to me where they feel like they can say what they want to say and move on like it's big no deal but then when it's the other party i.e candace it's like no we should nail her to the cross we need to dissect why is she saying these stuff on twitter we have someone like giselle who is saying that i thought that she would be talked to someone who was going to talk to her like, mm -hmm. why do you think that you should say anything and no one can speak to you? But once Candace says anything, because she's a wordsmith, you feel mm -hmm. as if like someone needs to sit her down and talk to her. What makes that right? And then you're saying that you don't see where this whole narrative that is coming up regarding colorism is being displayed on yeah. the show. You're acting as if like you don't see the reason. And Wendy said it perfectly. In most persons would want to query, what behavior have I shown you what, right. that displays colorism? Right. But you guys are more set on shutting it down instead of trying to understand the other person's perspective as to why right. they may feel right. as if that you may display that behavior. Jesus was quick to say, oh, I grew up in a black this, so I grew up in a black that, I went to a black school. And all I that she was talking this. about but does not prove It is so shit typical. Because not I'm pretty that sure that all of that went down in all of that went not, down in Not that. saying that she's racist, but if you like it onto a racist, when you say someone is racist, they're always quick to say, I, I have a black, have black friend. Black friend. Yeah. Right. So it was something like that. I was I was like, mm -mm, that's not the way to go. Yep, no. that, that's our way. Mm -mm. Um, but it was, it's just, it was to me like it was us the whole gaslighting of it all. Yeah. We then moved to the next scene where we had the husbands were joining. Before we had the husband join, we had a little back and forth backstage with Nika and her renter husband, and uh, pretty much that was crazy. I guess she, we'll see that. She threw uh, one three. under the. She threw. She throwed one under the bus by basically saying that if he doesn't act in line, pretty much, you can go what go to where one is, wherever he is. And I'm like, this person is literally like delusional at this point. Like the way how she speaks to her husband, and then to have the nerve to say that can um Wendy's husband needs saving. Ridiculous. Right. I don't know what she's doing. What what is her issue though? What is it that she needs to get off her chest? Because clearly she has something to get off her chest. And I but don't if know. you realize to show but you like, that girl, you're um, a Z Nika class. has no storyline. There no is story no line. two parts of this reunion. And she hardly said anything. And there was hardly anything yeah. being asked to her. She and Ashley yeah. had nothing for these two parts to say. They That's the whole point there. where they're at the end of the couch. That's the exactly. whole reason why they're at the and end. And I hope they I hope they take notice of that when they're casting <laughs> for the next season. If you're going to bring back Ashley and you're going to bring back Neka, let's reduce yeah. their roles. Let's reduce their camera time because these persons brought nothing 
for the last season. They brought nothing. They brought nothing for, for the reunion. And come next week will be the Ashley, last part of the reunion. And down. we didn't get nothing from Ashley or Neka. Mm-hmm. And it's to show you how they made Wendy her storyline. Ashley's storyline was bringing up the whole thing with Neka and Wendy. Mm-hmm. And Neka's storyline was the whole shrine thing with Wendy. And of course, they're saving that for the last part of the reunion. But it's just to show you. They didn't have anything going on this season. And even if there was something going on, we didn't see it. Because guess what? Mm-hmm. It wasn't worth watching. True. Um, the husbands joined. We got where they were on the... Um, Andy decided to do his introduction. And I think that's where we got... Robin decides to then question Chris about the Photoshop screenshot. It was and crazy that she was questioning him like that. She has like, all of this energy him. for someone This is the same energy that you should husband. bring with one. Exactly. The same <laughs> energy you have for people's husband, you should have for your own. Simple. Right. Like you come on this reunion and you tried the first parts of the reunion bringing up this screenshot thing and got nowhere with it. So you felt yeah. like, let me bring it back up again. Just to show you why we allegedly believe one of you had something to do about this girl coming out regarding this because why you guys are so pressed in bringing out this screenshot thing and whatever screenshot happened i don't recall ever seeing screenshots or hearing a voicemail or anything when the story was leaked maybe i missed it i don't recall so i'm so surprised that the persons who have nothing to do with it know so much about the situation, but yet they are more concerned it was about what Candy says on Twitter. for the girl to be saying, leave Giselle out of this. Why would she be defending Giselle? This ain't got nothing to do with Giselle. This exactly. Why would Giselle you, name reach the in this? unborn child and uh, Chris. Exactly. How did Giselle got into this? So it, it does kind of give a bit sketchy. Sketchy. I don't know. But Very. Um, that was pretty much the back and forth and then we had love how chris shut her down i loved how I he love, brought that was my favorite up, this is yes. the reason why I, I probably gave this episode nine, nine because of chris because i response. did i was like damn i guess candice is rubbing off on him cause... yes because he came ready and i can bet ready. they probably knew they weren't returning the next season so they're like mm-hmm. you know what we don't and plan to come back point. so guess what he had I'm a gonna, point too. yeah he had a point because why is it when you fell some way, Giselle, it should be yeah. accounted it's okay. for? But when she said she felt like you had something to do with it, yeah. it's like, oh no, that's and that's the thing what we are talking about. Like, why is it that your feeling is out more important that than yeah. almost all of them are ignoring? Exactly, and, and, they, and they're too dumb to realize that is what's happening. Yeah. Like, why is it you think it's okay for you, but it's not okay for her? And you mm-hmm. shut her down, and I liked all you said. Next, Next question. question. I was like, yes. And that's how I felt. You know, I should have. T- I'm going to title this episode "Next Question" because that was just a <laughs> highlight of the episode. Like, it Next is question. a highlight of the episode. And I loved Karen's reaction. She was like, I believe oh, it okay. is. But we then get Gordon doing his long speech, <laughs> drawing it out into the next part of the reunion about whatever he has to mm-hmm. share. I really hope to hear. I hope there's a sneak peek or something because I don't see why we have to be teased for this long thing that Tease he has for this. to say. He has been teasing for this for uh, the, 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 the trailer to From now the trailer. It's, been, yeah. it's been teased and I really want to know what is so serious to be said. And I really hope it's not something like I'm going to hear and I'm like, I waited three parts for right. you to just say that. So we'll see what he says. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share on the Potomac of the Housewives? Basically, that's it. Okay, guys. So remember, guys, remember in the comment section, just let us know on your thoughts on the parts two of the reunion. And also, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next week as we will discuss Bye, part three. And also catch us for our recap as well on our channel for Summer House Martha's Vineyard because we're really enjoying this season so far as well. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. Bye.